I went and I read for the casting director and uh, in the room, they were like, how would you like to go fly today to um, Arizona where they're filming the football scenes and meet Tom Cruise and read for him? So I was excited to go on a plane was what I remember. Wow. Um, wow. And I was excited to meet Maverick because yeah. I love yes. Tom Dude. Yeah, so I was excited to go hang out with him. So me and my mom and my dad, we went and we went into Tom Cruise's trailer and, and it was me, Tom, Cameron Crowe, my parents and oh, read a few scenes and uh, that was it. And, and, and it was crazy. It was, it was very much overnight. Uh, my life was just different. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I would take back. Awesome. Same here. There's nothing I would take back at all. You know, I, I love it. And I found out what I want to do for the rest of my life when I was five years old. Yo, happy Friday, Here everybody. Here Brotherly Love Pod in the house. The Pod to yeah. Pod. Welcome one, welcome all. How's everybody doing? The Pod to Pod. The pretty Pod good. to Pod. Here we yeah. are. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty I'm good. stoked today. Why are yeah. you stoked, Danny? Because I, I get to have a buddy on here. A buddy. We're not your buddies? No, you guys are okay. But worst. this guy, I They're haven't worst. seen him in a while, so we got a lot to catch up on. And now but you got a show. You got to talk to uh, him. We just, dude, whatever, We got to catch up, man. I got a show. <laughs> I got a podcast here <laughs> going on. Hey, it's a good excuse. Everybody, please welcome the man, the myth, the legend, John. Jonathan Lipnicki, everybody. Hey, hey. What's up, dude? hey guys, What's how up, you doing? Man, man dude, how are you? Good to see you, dude. Oh my, look at this, man. It's been a, you know, I missed you so much. I grew my hair out like you. <laughs> That's how <laughs> we both. I was just yeah. saying, we both got the like the long hair thing going on. We're rebelling. I love it, man. Yeah, you exactly. guys, Mohicans. Yeah, last, last Mohican yeah, hair. You guys could start a gang. <laughs> That's right. You said <laughs> Legends of the Fall, but you threatened you're cutting yours. What is this story? I am gonna. I'm gonna actually. I have an appointment after that. I don't know. I, I hit my threshold. You know. Yeah. Where I'm like, it's getting hot. It's getting. I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Get stepped on all the time and Ooh. pulled. And and I'm like, you know what? I. I know. It's too much for me. I had it. It was great. I. You know, great memories of it. But <laughs> we'll see. I might cut it off and then you know regret it. But. It's been, How short it's are you been a journey. Go? It's been, I think, two years of growing this. I grew yeah. it out from a, a zero, like a zero fade. Oh, no shit. way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, you got great hair. You do, man. Jeez. You're a bastard. You're a, I got three <laughs> hairs left. They all hang out in one part of my head. No, I don't. But my hair used to be super thick like that, too. And no, it's not. But no, it hangs in there. But I actually love a zero. I, that, that's my favorite. But it's it sometimes, depending on the time of year, you look like like you're dying. You know, so you can't. It's like, you're, I, look, I look like I'm sick. People are like, my God, what happened? No, man, but I wish I could grow hair like that. I right. really do. It's awesome. You know, you go through so much conditioner, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, Bro. That's yes. the problem is I'm constantly Dude. just buying conditioner. It's like one pump shampoo, four pumps conditioner, and you got to get all these ends uh, and stuff. Exactly. Man. The ends get all, they get gnarly. Yeah, you know, they, they do, get man. Really, they get really bad. I have a newfound respect for, for, for a lot of women with long hair because you're right, yeah. it gets hot. And my biggest struggles are in the morning. Do you notice like you're pulling out of your eyeballs and your ears and it's like up your nose. You just can't get away from this hair. Oh yeah, it's 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 absolutely obnoxious and I'm just, I'm over it. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get I'm it, tapping man. out. I know, yeah. bro. You know, how, how old are you, buddy? I'm 32 or 30. Oh, I just turned 33. I'm sorry. 33. I'm 33. Dude, I'm not I, don't, yet. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it, this is odd, but I got to bring this up because when I was exactly your guys' age, I had exactly that hair. Yes. I don't know if it's like a young 30s it's guy like a, thing like that. You have to an have the early mane. 30s crisis. I don't know. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. A Didn't you? And you have a motorcycle. So you're definitely I, going through yeah, a crisis. Yeah, pretty much. Andy, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I'm really living the dream <laughs> right now, man. Just, yeah. He's got a motorcycle and a, and a, and a mustache from the 30s. I got this. <laughs> I stumbled exactly. upon this. I've always wanted wanted like one of these like uh like uh musketeer mustaches or whatever you're d'artagnan yeah. yeah and i just accidentally like stumbled upon like this perfect you, curl no it literally looks like you flat ironed no i didn't dude perfect it's just I, now it's, yeah. i really i do envy that mustache that is See, it's kind of a stab. Yeah, i know yeah dude. i really do i really do i have to keep it for a little while I feel like you gotta you gotta great. have like a like a like a scottish accent when you talk like that you know <laughs> oh, like yes. the old boxers you know oui. oh yes <laughs> Donkey, that be Shrek. <laughs> Hello, so, Donkey. No, it's good. It's good. What you been up to, man? I mean, I don't know you. Obviously, you and you and Andy have been friends for years. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, that's. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we actually haven't met. We've only hung out like a handful of times, but every time we hang or talk, it, it seems like you know we just we've known each other for years. I guess similar upbringings or whatever in the crazy industry that we're in and all this stuff. So exactly, you Valley Boys. You know? Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> I wish. I actually wish we met. We met when we were kids and like hung out because I feel like we would have hit it off. Immensely. Exactly. Yeah, you know, there's a certain kinship you have with other people who have that background, have that, you know, the, crea the creative outlet as a kid becomes a career. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's it's wild, and there's definitely a you know a kinship there, a brotherhood, yeah. so to speak. No, yeah, sure, is. dude. No, I I've always said that that I don't. It's it's almost impossible to explain the condition of being a child in the entertainment industry unless you've gone through it because it's weird. You know, your life gets thrown into such this this crazy environment that you're. Look, we got it all in, but you don't get the the same time that you did as a child to do the things and grow up the same way. You, it's like you have a year to do what normal kids had, you know, eight years to accomplish, and then you got to pick it up later on in life. Did you feel that way? Did you experience that? Like, you know, being under the spotlight as a kid, that it, it, it was just such a drastic change, you know? You know, I have to credit um, my parents a lot. They were, you know, our parents, they do the best they can, right? Yeah, and And my yes. parents did uh an amazing job as far as really helping me balance uh everything so i remember for instance one time i was offered a series regular on a show i was i was recurring on and i turned it down because i wanted to go do a little league in agora hills there you go, and man. my parents were, uh, were totally you know for that choice they would ask ask me after each project you know is this something you still want to be doing and the answer awesome. was always yes because i love acting to this day you know, I shot recently, I had a little part in a movie um, during during the strike here, uh, was lucky enough to get on a project that had an interim agreement. And I just, I have always loved it. I've always loved it. You know, it, it's like you, you, you just, it's, it's, I didn't know what that feeling was um, until I, I got older. It, it's the same feeling as being in love. Yeah, I love yeah, being man. there. I, I, yeah. I want to do this forever through thick and thin sometimes things go your way sometimes they do not for a long time <laughs> yes. but it's, it's it's the greatest job in the world heck yeah man yeah no it is look the ups and downs are real and they are something that you have to you know figure out what how you deal with those things and, and how you process those things some people do it better than others clearly but it sounds like your parents approached the way our parents did we always yeah. they always treat it like i always said like we were in some little league you know yeah. um and and we did it when we wanted to do it and if we ever didn't want to do it we didn't have to do it you know yeah. um and exactly it was, it's it's it up was, to the parents a lot you know it is it, it yeah, was really totally. a hobby for us you know we didn't even yeah. realize i didn't even realize there was money to be made like that i was really making money yeah. doing it yeah. until i was ready to to like buy a car you know till like i was thinking about like i remember being like 14 going like man you know cuz i i've loved cars my whole life yeah. right so i was like well i came to get my license and buy my car and and then I, for the first time i was like you know how much what am i yeah. making what do i make what am i gonna be able to spend on a car these kind of things yeah for but i didn't even really think about like it as a job i loved it to your point so much that it was just a love and it's always been a love and that's why you know 42 years later dude i'm still doing it and I, I always tell people because people like you know because we've been doing it for so long as kids and stuff they come up and like you know i, I want to get into the, the the industry what can i do what, what is your advice and my advice is always the same thing. Look, I really can't help you. Nobody can really help That's you. That's good advice, Matt. No, yeah. but, but listen, it's true. Nobody can really. My advice is honestly, you're on your own. No, nobody, <laughs> nobody can really, nobody can really help you. But but here's what my advice is: you, if you love it, like it's like you said, like it's the love of your life, and you know, no matter whether you're going to have a job or not, that you're an actor to the day from zero to the day you die then do it and go after it. If it's not that, if you have other, like if you want the fame or if you're looking at the money or if it's something else, stay away from it. Don't do it. It is not worth it. Fame is not what you think and it's not worth it. Yeah, it's it, absolutely. I always say this. I mean, I say it very similar. Similarly, um, is I say, um, if, 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 if you have anything else in your life that makes you just as happy, do that. Yeah. <laughs> For yes. sure. This is, yeah. Because this is very, very, very painful. It, it can is. be awful if it isn't the thing you really want to dedicate your life to. 100%. You're 100% right. People don't understand. Yeah. You know, they see a lot of the bells and whistles, you know, and they see the top one. Well, they only one see the successes, and right? They only see the success. They, they don't, don't see, realize. Yeah. They don't they don't realize the, the struggle that absolute it takes. Absolute struggle that most of it is most of the time for most people. You know? I mean, that's the truth. Yeah. Even if you've had a lot of success like like you've had and, mm -hmm. and, and that we've had at different points in our lives, dude, the struggles and the Far or, and the failures, oh. Out, oh yeah, like they yeah. are the the percentages are ninety ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, I think and you know, more than and that. I think it's like ninety eight. Well, and you yeah. and you come to realize that the actual job, like 
acting, whatever the job is, is uh, literally 0.5 percent yes. of the trials well, and tribulations that you go work. through, right? Because that's it's between action and cut, and then the real work starts. Then yeah. the journey yeah, starts. 0.5 like, percent if you're if you're if you're working. If you're working, <laughs> you know? exactly, exactly, it's, exactly. It's, exactly. Even like, if you what's get, the yeah. hardest part? I'm like getting a job. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, getting exactly. a job, the job is, so is the hardest part. And you yeah. know what I always say? Like like life is stress, right? It what is. are you willing to stress over? I'm willing to stress over this forever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. But but life is stress. What do you want to stress about? I, I love this. Yes. And yes. I realize it's increasingly becoming harder and harder to just be an actor. Yeah. You have to adapt. You have to do uh, different creative outlets to really be able to, to leverage different things. I, I produce now. Um, I work at a production company called Buffalo 8. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. I know Buffalo. And so I, do. I, uh, I produce and and cool. I act and I teach acting. I do a bunch of different things. It's great, dude. All around the thing I love. That's awesome. Which is man. telling stories. Yeah, but it is so hard now to just be an actor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you it's have to be a multi hyphenate in one you know area or another. Andy, I know you've directed a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I know he got to, didn't he hasn't he directed both both of you guys too? Oh, yeah, <laughs> he's always trying to direct both <laughs> of us. Oh, yeah. even in real life. Yeah. Even in, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On even, and off the set. Yeah, on and off the set. God, <laughs> nobody's off safe. Set. His expression on oh, yeah. set is, nobody's safe on this set. Yeah. No one. <laughs> He'll fire anybody at yeah. any time. But I also say, not even me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'll fire even... himself, too. Yeah, because you never know. Nobody's yeah. safe. No, but you're right, man. Like, look, that's, you're absolutely right. It is about a multi-hyphenate. I mean, you have to branch oh, yeah, out and now do other things. Yeah, now it's really, stuff. really, really weird. All the different fingers you have to have in different yeah. spots If now. you want to, you know, if you want to be relevant and and survive you and survive and be successful so you said you're living in oklahoma now right so oklahoma you, yeah how Dude. long how long you been there uh, i've been here i believe nine months i, I left oh, la a, around a year ago i've been there my whole life grew up in westlake village went to like yeah. uh, agora high school wow, and crazy. i just hit a point where my family had left uh during the pandemic and I, I hit a point about a year ago where I was like, you know what, all my, I have a TV show that I'm on coming out next year. My network test was in my living room. Okay. Uh, I just hit a point where I realized I'm self-taping for everything. Everything yep. I do is either Zoom or self-tape anyway, with the exception of, I mean, one thing every, yeah. barely, right? Yeah. So I was like, you know what, I, I want to see what it's like to live somewhere else. And I just got rid of everything I owned. Amazing. Except for what could fit in my my Jeep Wrangler, Love and I story. just I got a Jeep Wrangler, bro. dude. Yeah, Wrangler, I got a Wrangler baby. Bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm coming to visit, man. Through the wave, uh, the Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but yes. I, I I wanted to just see what yes. was out there and see you know a different quality of life and a slower pace, and it's been amazing. I I, I drove around for quite a bit, um, and then I ended up in Oklahoma. I had a few friends out here from high school. And uh, just the, there's a growing film community. Yeah, there I is. I can do everything from, you know, at home. And, and I teach also locally out here. And I, I love it. It's so, I'm so, it's it's so peaceful for me. That's Great, awesome, dude. Yeah, dude, so dude I'm coming. I'm yeah, going to be your new neighbor, like, bro. That's like inspiring yeah, for us. because we serious. No, I'm we, coming, we really, man. We have that urge as well to yeah, kind of we get out into a, do. a little sooner, bit. Sooner than later, we've, yeah. we've. Talked about a uh, a move somewhere. We have to do it in threes because we only move. We we move as one as one organ as one unit. So we just yeah. yeah. So we're like, when are we ready to move? And it's like the three guys in one pair of pants, yeah. like this somewhere <laughs> where we yeah. just sort of shuffle into another place. Yeah. So we're trying. To I, I think out it's. Where amazing, that is. I mean, it, there's. I think it's with the how the landscape of the industry is developing. You you're gonna fly to work anyway. I you know. know you as you're well. Right. Find somewhere where you really love. I I love LA. I grew up there. There always is, is a piece of my heart there, right? But it lost so much of the magic. Yep. Oh, dude. Oh, it, it has, has gone. Bro. It has, dude. It, it is, really it has. Is, it is. Yeah. It is struggling right now. LA and yes. Disneyland. You know. Yes. <laughs> yes. LA and Disneyland, man. Lost a little of the magic. Lost around a little it. magic. It just yeah, is man. different. It's You're just right. different. And I have this little life out here. And then I've I've booked a few things, and I've had to go fly and shoot those. And then I come here and it's it's quiet. I live in a neighborhood. Yeah. People wave to me. It's so cool, crazy. dude. Crazy. It's yeah, wild. Dude. To me, yeah. that's like what the so hell are you weird, waving at? You know? yeah, yeah, people yeah. don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know well, yeah. I'm sure the first couple of times you're like, what? Did I yeah. do something? Did do we know? Do I know you or yeah. what? It's true. Exactly. I, in LA, you get yeah. dirty yeah. looks. I say hello, neighbor, and people literally give me dirty looks. Oh, yeah, for I'm sure. Like, yeah. I'm just saying hi. Well, you know, it's, it's the mustache though for you. It probably is. It's intimidating. Where you said your family moved before you did, right? Did they they yeah. moved to Oklahoma though, right? No, they went to Colorado. Um, okay. I went out and I visited for a few months, 
and it wasn't, it just didn't, I was like, you know what, I'll go on my, my little journey. I'll go and see a few different places. And yeah. when I landed in, well, landed, when I drove to Oklahoma, yeah. uh, I didn't Your land. Jeep can fly. Uh, things, things just happened. <laughs> what a Jeep is this? It was really Jeep's weird. <laughs> it was just, things just happened. It just, things fell into place. I met a bunch of different people at the same point. One of, even one of my favorite Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighters, who I'm a big fan of, his gym's out here. Like, and now I train with, I train under him. So it's oh, like man. a lot of just things fell into place. I thought I was going to be here maybe a month. And now, now I'm here. You That's know? where you're so supposed cool, to be dude. then, man. That's it. That's yeah. awesome, dude. So cool to hear. That's so cool. I love the jujitsu too. Uh, we yeah, started you guys, that not yeah. that long ago. Um, and even in the first month, I didn't even realize that with other guys that I thought we either maybe could fight or were like physically, you know, in intimidating or much bigger than me. I'd, I'd always have an issue with making that direct eye contact. And I never knew yeah. it until I started doing jujitsu. And I realized, hey, you know what? This guy might be more intimidating, bigger than me, whatever. But that doesn't mean that we're not equals when it comes to being able to protect ourselves. But he's still got nuts and I'm going to kick him in. <laughs> That's what I do right there. Just the old punch. Also, but where, are you still training? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. We got to get back into it. Like we the yeah. last we had our podcast and um, we had to read. We've taken, a, we've taken a, a few months off, yeah, but we're looking which, to get back in. We have it. to get back in. We've also, I mean, we've all been making, I've, especially myself, because I was the most out of shape, been making a big push to get back yeah. in shape. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, exercising and working out. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get back into jujitsu as well. Jujitsu. Good. good. Yeah. So, got, yeah, dude, help, man. You're a badass, dude. Well. You're a badass. How bro? many years have you been doing it? Oh, um, dude, he's a freaking badass. Like, this guy will like kick 15, all our asses. 15, I think. 15? Yeah, dude. I got my black belt before COVID. Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, and uh, I, I'd say 15. It's more on and off, like, 17 or 18. But I didn't – I actually went through some stuff in my life, and I didn't train for a year leading up to getting here. And that was the longest I didn't train for. And I got out of shape, and, you know, a lot of things weren't going well in my life. And then Same getting here. out here, I started getting back into shape. I'm working with a personal trainer. I'm going to jujitsu. Actually, it's my first week back at jujitsu because I, I got injured uh, at jujitsu. Uh, but I, what did you do? What I did you it. do with jujitsu? Really, it's it's amazing. I'm, I I you know I I've been able to maintain somewhat good ears. I had to have one yeah. of them fixed, but it's all good now. Did you really it got a little cauliflower? I had to have no. it like smush back flat. So no way, dude. Good. How the hell do they do that? Like a flat iron or you just when you're done with your hair, do you just kind of clip it on the edge of the ear there? You're like, I'm gonna straighten this. That and, and Andy's mustache. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they drain they they drain the front and the back of it, and then they just kind of, mm. you know. Wow. And it was a really good. Uh, he's uh, out in Westlake Village. Great, uh, great dermatologist did a beautiful job. Nice. And then, but, nice. I thought the, but then I had the inner ear one for a while. Now it's better. Where I couldn't wear uh, AirPods. They just pop out. Really? Weird. Yeah. Because it, it got uh, small wow. in there and then it couldn't really go in there. And that one that one settled down a bit and it isn't feeling as uh, angry in there. But, um, you so know, you the definitely like my spiders back, that so decided whatever, to crawl in there. You know? Have you seen the videos of the spiders that crawl in people's ears I and they have. grow in there in their family? They shed their exoskeleton? Yeah. And then they live in your ear. Have you seen these videos? This woman had like an itchy ear. This woman had an, had an itchy ear for seven years. She couldn't get all. It was wax. They went a, in there. It was a family of spiders not, no. who were living in her ear, and no. they were shedding their exoskeletons. Okay, so no, yeah. it was. It wasn't. It oh, was you like think a, you know. Well, no, I just the facts were. Well, the three, facts are that three she months. She had a family no. of raccoons no. living in her ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I heard. No, yeah. uh, it was. It was like they a were very small raccoons. It was a few months, but she did go to the doctor because she thought she had an earache, and when he looked in there, there was one spider and the exoskeleton of a molted spider as well. <laughs> yes. Wow. So they yeah, did removed bro. both. They removed both. Are you sure that's not what it is? I'd go get it checked. I'm not trying to freak out. No, no, I, 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 I got it checked. We're good. <laughs> just kidding. No spiders. Crazy, man. That's all. So, so you're getting back in shape now and everything? Yeah, yeah. Lost a, lost a lot of weight, getting back into shape. Dude, how much um, weight? How much? Because this is, we've been on a similar journey here because yeah. you were super jacked. Uh, I mean, at one point, you still look like you're in good shape now, but at one point you were like super jacked. I was as well super jacked at one point in my life. And then I really fell off the bandwagon, dude. Yeah. And I just don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's hard to like maintain that from 
a teenage through your twenties, and it just sucks. So, it, but it, uh, it, it, it is, I it it is, and and sometimes it's like I feel that like there's a definite parallel with mental health in that. And there is yeah. let it slide, and then it's yep. hard. Yeah. The hardest thing is getting back to day one. Yeah, Once man. I get past day one, and I yep. make myself go, you know, now I'm in pretty good shape again. Uh, about two years ago, I was in really good shape, you know, sub 10% body fat, Shit. really was feeling feeling myself and things were going well. And then, you know, stuff happens and maybe it's an injury, maybe it's something in our life, but it's it's crazy how that is such a, you know, parallel with our mental health. There are a few things in okay. life, I think, that are so consistent with mental health and going to the gym. And I I know uh, I, I all three of you are in great shape. So, you know. It's, you know, I find when you get older and obviously I have a few years on you and Andy, you bastards, um, but uh, I'm 47. So, you know, it's a uh, man, it is tough. And w- wait, wait, you get into your mid 40s, buddy. Yeah, I was just going to say it this. is. Yeah, it's 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 it, it, there's another factor that creeps in yep. besides mental health and emotional health. It's physical. And just the mm-hmm. fact that your body just doesn't really respond. And if you try to keep it clean and you're not supplementing it with you know, a bunch of creatines and HGHs and all these things that a lot of guys start to do in their mid-40s because the muscle tone just doesn't doesn't respond the way mm-hmm. it should. Even if you're in good shape, it just doesn't respond that way. You get a little crepey skin. You're like, this is weird. I've always been in pretty good shape and and, yeah. and, 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 and have held myself accountable. But, man, it is you just physically don't look the same with the same yeah. work. Well, that's what I've realized. Thanks, guys. Lots no, no, of that's lots, yeah. lots of good stuff. That's what I've enjoyed the last too. five to seven years yeah. of your elasticity, yeah. fellas. Yeah. Well, no, but yeah. here's what it really is. Here's no, what it dude. really is: is that yes, you're right, Joe. It's right? Like, no. But, but what I've realized now too is that uh, before, you know, it was okay. I'm going to work out today. I'm going to feel really good. Yes, the mental health is a major component. Huge yep. But also too, I'm going to see these muscles grow. I'm going to feel good. But now I have to do it, dude. In my mid forties. Just to maintain. Right. I have to work right. as, just as hard every day just to keep it. There's I no take growth. two days off, right. and I'm like, what happened? There's no growth. Like, it's like instantly I can just go. And for yeah. me, it's different. I don't gain weight. I just evaporate into nothing. I literally, my my normal body weight would be one of those guys you're like, oh my gosh, dude, you need to eat. Matt becomes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, honestly, I'm a little jealous of that because I feel like I eat a slice of bread dude. and, you know, I can't move, I can't move for days. Bro, so uh, I'm, here, I'm hey, the same yeah. way. What, like, literally, if I breathe, you could see it. If Let I, if I am you. holding my breath and dehydrate myself, I got a great, I get great abs. But if I literally breathe the wrong way, I balloon up. My brother Matt is the exact opposite. If yeah. he doesn't eat pasta, he literally is, I swear yeah. to God, he's his own exoskeleton. He vanishes. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. turns to the side and he's gone. And let I me wish. tell you something. I wish. And let me tell you something. What guys, a problem I, to I, have. No, I know. Everybody says this. Oh, what a problem to have. It is just oh, as much God. work. Yeah, it's true. To, to have to eat every three hours and eat a lot. And if I if I work out, I have to pump protein shakes. I have to do a lunch after. It's a pain in the ass. Otherwise, I will just continuously lose, lose, lose. I'm like you guys. I have a half of a bagel. And literally, my top just, two just, abs. The, the bagel yeah. comes out on your stomach. It turns you can see, that, you just, see the outline of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the bagel. <laughs> How thin is his skin? Is this, <laughs> I, I think this is the actual bagel. Look at this. What, yeah. what were you doing on Melissa and Joey? Because you were yoked on that. Yeah, you he were. Still you were yoked on that show. He still you is, just dude. Every day. Yeah, just training. You know, man. I do. He um, even had he had a always, gym in his dressing room. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I, look, I'm 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 still in pretty close shape to that. You know, I was. I was your age when I when I started that show. Wow. So I was what? 34. I was what? 34 and we did a that. A year older than him. So a year older than you but we, I did that for 6 years. Are six you kidding years. me? So I was 40 yeah. 41 when I was done something like something like that 40. Um <clears throat> and uh you know yeah I, I do I try to keep it very simple. I try to I, I can't get ahead of myself cuz I feel like when you set these crazy goals that's when you fall short or you burn out, right? So when you mm-hmm. go I'm training 2 hours a day every day did it that's a recipe for enjoy the first month of that, and then that's going to be unsustainable. So I try to come up with a realistic idea for myself, and I, I've been doing this, and it's worked pretty well for a very long time. I do, like, one body part a day. That's mm. what I do. That's like the Stallone so, work. <clears throat> so I'll do chest, and I'll do abs, Ugh. and maybe uh, maybe 15 minutes of cardio, because, you know, guys don't need a lot of extended cardio. Uh, that's, it's more about getting your heart rate up. So <clears throat> I stick to, like, 10, 12 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day, I try to get my heart rate up real good extended, and then maybe I'll go for a nice long walk in the evening or something like that. Good, Like a good walk, you know, where you're kind of breathing hard. But I do chest, 
I'll do I'll do biceps, maybe tries and shoulders on the same day, and then back, and then I'll do a leg day and then cardio. And I do it like six out of seven days. You know what's interesting? And that's it. You know what's interesting, and Joe? It's, and it's sorry, I've for me. Uh, fallen asleep over <laughs> sorry, here. Sorry, really? You know, you know what's interesting, Joe? I, I read this story the other day and it really resonated. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy yeah. who was working at a gym. He's ripped. And every day he would see this guy walk into the gym who was out of shape. He'd walk into the gym and sometimes he would turn around and leave. Hmm. And then a month later he sees him and he's doing one set. Walk in, do one set and leave. And then he doesn't see him and he doesn't go to that gym. And a year later he goes back to the gym and the guy is in shape. And he was like, and he goes up to him. He's like, I don't understand, dude. I, well, I remember coming in and you literally just walk in and leave. What was that? He was like, because you know what? Steroids. I had, I had to start. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I had to, people, like you were saying, people build these huge goals for themselves. Yeah. I need an hour, two hours. He was like, all I needed to do was make sure I drove to the gym. That's how far under I was. Right. I just needed to, to make what? that the point. That was me. Getting to the gym every day was yeah. the goal. Yeah. Just getting there. That's and it. then getting there and doing five minutes. And it's and it, no, it's proven psychologically. If I you think... say, all I'm going to do today is five minutes, Man. then you're going to, once you catch the bug, that five minutes will turn to 10, and that 10 will turn to 20. I and agree. sure enough, it's in there that now I'm, and it was brilliant. I was thinking, just show up. That's all you got to do at first. I mean, yeah, yeah not every day up. is going to be equal. You no. know, some days you're going to go, some days you're going to go and you're going to absolutely crush it. And hopefully yeah. that's uh, more days than it, than it is not. But and that's just some like days life. it's just show up, do a little cardio, just know that you went and that you kept that promise to yourself. Dude, that's, that's, right. that's the metaphor for that's life right. every day. You know, not every day is going to be peachy, but you just got to show, show up, up. And, and do your best. Forget the rest. Yep. I feel like As oh a great God. Tony Horton always used to say, say yes. I'm working out with Tony Horton, say dude. Say yes. And, I, and I'm loving it. Tony Horton, you know who Tony Horton is, P90X? Yeah, 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 dude, yeah. So he was on the podcast. He's and been, uh, he invited he's been, me. He's, he's invited us into his family. And dude, I go to his house five days a week and work out with him. <laughs> it's awesome. I, I, he, can't, he can't get rid of me. He can't shake me. And uh, he's, he's he, anyway, I love it. I love it, man. It's awesome. It's but great. anyway, I just feel like all the meal plans and the gizmos and the gadgets and all these mm -hmm. things, like, it's just, that's why you see people yep. balloon up and shred. And well, balloon up and, and shred. Look, it's like, it, it's a horrible yo-yo like, to put yourself on. I just yeah. try to be consistent. I know I don't have Dude. the mental capacity to to climb that mountain multiple times. So I yeah. try to stay close to the top as I possibly can. Sure. And so that they're my, they're, the, the movements are small, you know? That's a very good, that's, <laughs> that, that is a very good point. And, and it is, it's really, it is about consistency. It, it's definitely, it becomes even more important as you get older. Uh, yeah. So start. You know, as soon as you can, um, and then uh, wait, well, I was gonna—I had something brilliant to say, but it slipped oh, in my no, mind. Oh no, it's your turn! Well, because all you guys do is and talk. He's got the brain fog. These guys just freaking talk <laughs> and talk, and I can't even you get a word point, in. And it's gone. And doesn't it feel awful? Feels it's awful. so embarrassing. It is. <laughs> Aren't you embarrassed? No. Aren't you embarrassed? No. Where are you I'm going with say. this, Andy? I'm I sorry to pick know. on you, but man, this happens to me almost every it's day. It's gone because I, I just... almost thought I had a problem there for a minute, guys. With oh this my podcast, lord! I thought, oh no, I'm losing my mind. Yeah, uh, I know. This podcast made you think yes. that. Oh my god! It's really put me over the edge. <laughs> Do you have siblings? I have a sister. Yes, who's older? Okay. How much older? Uh three years. Okay. Okay. So it's like uh, this right. relationship. Yeah. yeah I mean, she Joe, just, she just, uh, she just had her first kid uh, a okay. month ago. Congratulations. Oh. So I'm, a, I'm an uncle. I'm going to meet my nephew uncle Johnny next week for the first time. Wow. Wow. When are you, when are you, when are you going to meet the uh, little guy next week? On the 20th. So, nice, dude. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, I feel like she took the pressure off it for me. So that's great. Because yeah. um, I don't know if that's happening. But uh, <laughs> same here. Are you but, single? Are you seeing somebody? What's your sorry? relation? What's your relationship status? Me right now, single. Me too, man. Shit. You guys do need to like form a band I do, or something. You know what, bro? Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been thinking about. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll 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 table that part of the discussion. Yeah, definitely. We'll <laughs> hey, what terrible. part? Without giving away too many specifics, what part of Oklahoma are you in? Uh, Oklahoma City. Sweet. Okay. okay. See. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm out kind of in the suburbs on the the outer edges. I I love it. It's quiet. Uh, the people are so nice. Yeah. Just really friendly people. Uh, and and it's funny. I just never. I. It's not like I had a major connection. Family members. I had a few friends, and it just it just fit. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. Work wise, I thought when I tell my manager they're gonna are they gonna drop me? Are they gonna and they said, do you have self-tape equipment? I'm like, yeah. They're like, you're good. Have fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> what a night. They're like, you're wow, fine. You fly crazy. back if wow. we need you, you know? Yeah. Uh, so like, that, and I've worked, you know, let's see, I've done three movies since I left. 
dude. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not. You know, and they're all in process. different places. One was in Austin. One was in Newport, Rhode Island. One was uh, one was out here. So wow, Amazing. that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's so crazy, cool. man. You know, look, I mean, look, and again, like I said, I'm a little older than you guys. So when Andy was young, I, I actually felt more like an uncle to Andy, right? Because we're like 12 years apart, mm-hmm. you know. So 11 and a half years, right? But 12 years, right? 11 and a half, something like, something like that. Anyway, but, uh, you know, I'll never forget because <clears throat> we're all big Tom Cruise fans, right? So mm-hmm. I'll never forget, we were in, Matt and I, and, and Andy was there too, but he was, you know, what, when Jerry Maguire came out, it was 97, Dude, it's right? one of my favorite movies. Right. But dude, I mean, literally, man, uh, it was a, like, that was it a... was, it was an incredible thing. And, you know, you talk about fame and stuff like that. I don't know what you had done before that or if you had done anything before that, but for, but for me, for grad, for me, it was sort of like this gradual rise, right? Where I was on a TV series as a kid, and there was some success, and I did another show, and then like that third show, like that really that third show after some failed pilots, like exploded. But it was, but I was around. But dude, literally, like for people like me that were in the industry, like one minute you, I didn't know who you were, and then after you saw that movie, and that movie it became just the most one of the iconic films, greatest of movies the 90s, of all time. Truly, oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely, one of Tom Cruise's best, best and that's movies. saying something because Tom oh. Cruise, in my opinion, has literally had the greatest yeah. career of any absolutely. actor, absolutely ever, ever. I'm male, female, yeah, absolutely, whatever, dude. The greatest. Yeah, I don't think anybody is going to be able to look back at a career 40 that has years four decades no way with no letdown the guy literally still well, opens the mummy <laughs> no but you know what <laughs> i'm saying that was my only one yeah, that's your only one that is your only one outside uh, of that yeah, dude it's, it's uh it's interesting it uh it felt like that right one day yeah. it was one thing and then then one day it was it was never the same I'm right, sure. so that's what I was going to ask you because yeah. for, I know that I mean I'm not sure if you had done. You could tell me if you've done a lot of work before then, but I just remember like after that you couldn't go anywhere no. for. I mean, we couldn't go anywhere. Everywhere we were, whether it was late night, whether it was watching news programs. Mm-hmm. Yep. In other, did you know that a human head weighs eight pounds? I, I was going to say, dude, that, you're lying. I was going to say, did you know a human head weighs eight pounds? Was that written? Who fought? Like, where did that come from? So. Yeah, so it, it was really interesting. I did like two commercials, I think, before I did Jerry okay. Maguire. So literally, wow, like no. Yeah, and it kind of it kind of came out of nowhere because I auditioned for it. I was seen by a casting associate. They cast another kid. They shot two weeks with him. No, they him. yeah, they oh fired God. him. They no came way, back, to dude. The role again. They wouldn't see me because I was on a list of people who had already been seen by the associate. Oh, and my agent at the time was the head of the children's division at. It was CED then, now CESD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. said, don't see any kids we represent. I stake my reputation on it. I have the guy you want sitting in my office right now. Wow. Please just see him. And I went and I read for the casting director. And uh, in the room, they were like, how would you like to go fly today to um, Arizona where they're filming the football scenes and meet Tom Cruise and read for him? So I was excited wow. to go on a plane, was what I remember. Wow. Um, wow. And I was excited to meet Maverick. Because yes. I love yes. Tom Cruise. Yeah, so I was excited to go hang out with him. So me and my mom and my dad, we went and we went into Tom Cruise's trailer. And, and it was me, Tom, Camera Crow, my parents. And oh, read a few scenes. And uh, that was it. And, and, and it was crazy. It was, it was very much overnight. Uh, my life was just different. Heck yeah. And uh, I was just like, wow, this is... I didn't know how people knew my name. When we went to the premiere, they were saying my name. And I was like, how do these people know my name? <laughs> And then that was the first moment that things were kind of different. And then it was just, it yeah. was a, it was a blur for the next. So, so I think six, when it came out, it was a blur for the next uh, five, six years. Just, just, sure. just moving through time really fast, you know, yeah. um, doing a lot of, uh, doing a lot of different projects to a little, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, I was on Dawson's yeah. Creek for a little while, ran yeah. like yeah. I was on the Jeff Foxworthy show. I played his Son and my brother that. on it was Haley Joel Osment. Yeah. And uh, right. you, it was just Joel. very, it was very fast. It was just yeah. very fast. And um, it was amazing. I, I, I feel very lucky. You hear a lot of negative stories. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I would take back. Awesome. Same here. There's man. nothing I would take back at all. You know, you know I, I love it. And I found out what I want to do for the rest of my life when I was five years old. It's awesome. You know? yeah, dude, yeah, well, I did, I did too. I mean, so that's cool. exactly what, that's, we, we share that in common. I knew what I wanted to do as well. So, you know, and for wow. me, it was the, I guess that moment for me was probably like the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, mm-hmm. right? But going out there, I felt the same way you did. I felt like, wow. And then after that, it was never the same because it, in my generation, when you were on the Tonight Show, if you, if you scored big, which I happened to in the interview that I did, 
literally overnight it changed yeah. like the next morning yeah. 40 million people saw you and every network saw you and if you crushed that was it it was over and it set you on a different trajectory and that's what happened to me but i remember like i remember dude that movie was such a part of our lives we loved oh it so we went gosh. to see that as a family because movies were huge for us so every weekend as a family all of us, oh my, my mom gosh. and my dad, sometimes my, my meme and pop. Grandparents. Who are, who are our grandparents. And we friends. Would, like and we, friends. we always would have like some sort of family friend with my best friend, friend Dave Andy or, or Dave Andy Shaw or, or whatever. Yeah. But we would always go see movies and we'd go see one Friday and usually one Saturday. And we'd go to dinner and movies. And that yep. was our weekends. Like we weren't partying, we weren't doing anything. We were seeing movies as families, right? And some of the best weekends of our lives. Right? Absolutely. But Absolutely, when that movie yeah. was so, it was so in. in Influential in our, oh my in gosh. our, in it's our still life. To this I remember when they were going to remake or they, they were going to do a third installment of Home Alone, which we thought even was sacrilegious at the time. Mm -hmm. I thought we, I remember a dinner conversation we had. We would always talk about it, you know. And I said we would all agree as a family. Only if there's only, anybody the that only can, one should that have can ever take done the it. Reins and you Macaulay know what? Culkin would be Jonathan Lindsay. And, and, and yeah. honestly, they since do. they didn't do that with you, they should never do it. They, they should like, never you, do it. You at that point in time was the only person that would have rocked those shoes. Really, yeah. You just had this incredible, this like joie de vivre, man, and this, Dude, you and this, were and this innocence, so and good. yet this vivaciousness. But this, and and was, you know what's funny is I still see it to this day in, in your eyes, which is so special. Yeah. yeah. You haven't lost that. And, and dude, I just from my own perspective, so a lot of times, you know, I see kids that yeah. I've worked with and then they grow up and it's just- Ah, uh, it's gone. They lose it's gone. it. Dude, you you did not. have it, man. Yeah, and that is not. so freaking cool to see. Yeah, dude. Even your, like, your smile, it, it lights me up when you do yeah, that. Man. And Thank it's the you. same thing that was going on when you with, when, when you were when you were a kid. Hilarious. But just the relationship that you portrayed with Tom in that movie, man, was one of the most authentic. It like was. I still think about it. Even when I was in my 30s and like when I would date a girl and she'd have a kid, like, honestly, dude, I saw you on every child. Like it was like- I don't it's know, really man. Weird. You really got into my heart. Like it really got oh, thank in there. You. you know, it was real. It was real. I I, I love I loved that guy, you know? Yeah, um yeah. and he's been incredibly kind to me throughout my career. Yeah. Um and so cool. I I it was real. I just really yeah. I just really and to this day I, I really care about him. I don't see him that often. I don't have him, yeah. you know, on speed dial or anything. But when we've yeah. connected, I I have so much love for that guy, you know? Like and just, people, and that movie would have been incredible with or without me. That would have been an incredible movie. I just am very fortunate that the stars aligned and I happen to be well, a part of something with some incredible people who made my first experience really on set incredible. And that's very humbling wow. of you to say, but you definitely made, you were no, a big yeah, dude, part of, of, a big, of the success and how wonderful 100%. that movie was. Yeah. And honestly, I love Tom Cruise too. I'm just letting you know. I love him as well. I've never really worked, I've never worked with him, met him once. Yeah. And I love him. I think he's the coolest yeah. dude, man. <laughs> I met him, I met him once at the Mission Impossible 2 premiere and he was, he was super nice to me and super intense. And he was just like, how are you? Mm, so nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. You, you never feel like, like the only like, person in the world when he looks at you like that. Yeah, yeah dude, exactly. yeah. dude, he looked like dude, he yes, my soul. So true. He was like, "How are you?" It's I think he so grabbed true. my hand with both hands. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I was at that same premiere too. So were you? Yeah, that was uh, that was the one with the the rock climbing. And yes, the, yeah. He had, yeah, he had the yeah. long hair. It was the John Woo yeah. Mission Impossible? Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. I was at that premiere, dude. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, dude. Wait, I'm just I'm just a super then, fan of Cruise. Hold man. on, I just I'm I'm a big fan of Days of Thunder and like wait, random movies. Wait, before we I love that movie. Before we digress, my question never never that line: the human head weighs eight pounds. Where, was that written? Oh, or yeah, did you come so up with so that? Well, that was not in the script. Uh, it wasn't. There were a bunch of things that. Um, we were joking around on set, I believe. I mean, time goes by, it gets a little fuzzy, but from what I understand, we were I was just kind of messing around with one of the the ADs and they had me in the mic in the in the walkie say some random facts and then the next day those were in the in the dialogue. Wow. wow. I love that, man. Yeah. So cool, I love that. Man. What a cool story. That is so Cuz awesome, it was such man. an iconic moment. I mean, it's such an iconic <laughs> moment, dude. I've got all these scenes flashing through my yeah, mind right too, now, bro. man. I can me just too. see you as a little boy. Totally. <laughs> oh my God. The jean jacket, the spiked oh, hair, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, dude, yeah, the yeah, jean jacket. Yeah, yeah. Iconic, man. I see it like like yesterday, bro. Yeah, man. So cool. I'm Gosh. wearing a, I'm wearing a jean jacket for you today, yeah, man. man. I, that's what I thought. I thought that was a nod to me. Exactly. I appreciate. It. Honestly, I also thought that maybe 
I thought you, maybe you were just covering up the guns. You wanted to, you know, <laughs> yeah. not feel yeah, well, so bad. You know, look, make I mean, me not I, feel so bad about myself. You know, I have a, con- <laughs> I have a permit for these. I, I travel with them. No, but uh, <laughs> carrying the, concealed, yeah, concealed uh, carry permit for all of these <laughs> in all fifty states. It's very rare, but I was able to get it. You I know, got, I know a guy. I got two uh, Oklahoma. Que- well, one's kind of a story, and one's well, both stories, but questions attached. Uh, is this true? <laughs> when I, I was in, I was in Jesus. Tulsa, and uh, we went out one night. To the to the to the bars, and there were horses, and there were guys on like. So the thing to do would be ride your horse to the bar, and then after you get smashed, you you get yourself on the horse and you tie yourself on the saddle because you can't get a DUI unless you fall off. So cops, so like the horses knew where to go, so they would slap them on the ass and just kind of like hop along, and cops would follow these guys all the way back to hoping their, they would fall, hoping they would fall off so they could get so they could give them tickets. <laughs> Have you experienced this at all? I did. But this is in Tulsa, so this is not okay. Uh, no. I was about to say that. <laughs> that was like one of my memories, dude. I Sounds, was like, no, I, I, I did go. A there is no. a great place in OKC called Cowboys that is uh, line dancing and also like a rodeo, a rodeo inside what? Wow. at the line dancing place. And it's it was a, it was an experience. I went there and I was like, wow, you just I, I they also had a mechanical bowl. They had everything. Of course, really. They do. Wow. Um, you know and I've never seen anything you, like I that would, before. I would not go out with Andy anywhere if I was. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've been here for nine months. I got a perfect record. I go out with you one yeah. night. I'm on a damn yeah. horse. I fall <laughs> off by mistake. I get arrested. I hate you. No, oh, I tied no. myself to a horse, and they just let me straight <laughs> yeah. to jail. I understand. You're going to have to fact check this for we're me. Not gonna always, I, gonna, we're not going to fact check it. We're not going to test it. You're going to test it. You can fact check it. People uh, like me you know what I do like about bar. Oklahoma? Is that red dirt. You guys got that like Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all over. Yeah, I yeah. love that stuff. Starts in Utah, doesn't it? That red dirt. I think it's St. George's. Yeah, St. George's. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if it goes all the way from St. George to yes, Utah. Yes, it does, That's bro. A, or, it's just it's the same. It's the OKC. same geographical it's location. All right, and the other one was. Other have one? you experienced this yet? I was doing a movie, and uh, I had a a few days off, and I I wanted to get an Xbox. Uh, and it was my hotel, and it was a Target and a Hooters, and that was literally all that was kind of all around. you need. And I was, uh, and, and there was a rental car. I think I was too young to drive the rental car, but I had keys to it anyway. So I decided Classic. there was like a big medium, like a big medium in between. Median. Median. Oh, in it medium? Someone like, who, could, who could see <laughs> dead people? <laughs> this is getting even creepier. There was this medium right, there was in like the middle uh, of the road. <laughs> there was a divider, a large concrete divider in between oh, okay. my hotel. Did you say and, medium? Like yeah, medium. I said a medium. Did, what did I, I mean to, to say? make that out. I was like, did he say medium? <laughs> What did I mean? I've been drinking. No, it was a small. Median. Uh, it's the, it's a median. Between That's what I meant. A two median. Roads. A medium <laughs> is, a, is can someone... see dead people. <laughs> no. Okay. A median, right? Is that right? Yes. A median. One's a strip median. between two roads. One's a conduit between the living and the dead. We've yes. got very right. different. Clear. Very okay. Different. So large divider in between the hotel and the Target. So I I I, uh, I have a few days off. I'm going to go get a Xbox. I get in the rental car. I drive this really long route to the Target. And I wish I could just cut across the divider, but I didn't. I drove the long way to Target. I walk into Target. The legal way. The legal way, yeah. yeah. And wow. uh, following the law. And I walk into Target, and I grab my Xbox, and I go to check out, and there's nobody there. There isn't a single soul in Target. And I'm like, what the hell? Am I? Is this a sign that I'm supposed to take this Xbox or what? <laughs> and then I hear, ah, ah, ah. and so I put the Xbox down on the, on the, on the cash register. I walk outside, and I see a tornado like a massive freaking tornado and i'm from california dude i like earthquakes and maybe a strong gust of wind is all i've had to deal with a freaking tornado so i get in the rental car go right across the divider which i so wanted to drive across and now i had a good excuse so it's straight over the medium literally right over the medium they're talking to dead people right no. over the medium <laughs> who they then, were mad at me yeah, who then became dead herself it apparently, was t- yeah. apparently she didn't make it so then she had a great conversation <laughs> with herself no i'm kidding that's so terrible oh, so i know i went over the God. divider back to the hotel anyway long story short i got to the hotel they rushed me down underneath and this giant tornado just whipped right past us have you experienced any of the twisters yes wow yes i have uh, there's been a few I've luckily been where I live in an area where they kind of just pass through, but um, you know you have to be on alert for those for those things. They they do happen. Um, I've also been to Target, and there's been people inside the Target when I've been there. No. So I, that experience was you got to time it but, out with uh, a twister. You got to time it right but, uh, with a yes, natural the disaster. Tornadoes, it is something interesting because they also test the sirens on the weekend. So yeah. I, at first I was like, what is what what's going on every Saturday? I didn't get it. Um, and then Wake also up. 
the weather's just very it just one moment all this wind next moment perfectly fine it's very finicky it's very interesting but i like it there's something actually kind of nice about it falling asleep to some crazy weather for some reason yeah, i really that's like cool. it I like that maybe too. there's something wrong with me do you but, know, I'm, uh, a, I'm like that but i i think it's really fascinating do you have a storm shelter in your pad or nearby yes is there like one of those things that you i mean this is kind of stupid but one of those poles that you attach a belt to like the end of twister oh when gosh. bill paxton and helen hunt were floating and in, in I can no. see the eye. Yeah, that's it, dude. I can see the eye. It's a great movie. Anyway. Yeah, but you know, there's there there. Uh, I don't have that, but there are a bunch of medi- medians around uh, in the neighborhood that I that I try not to go over. Um, but and he has but, a pole uh, in his but, room. He uses uh, it for no, something I do not have though. a pole to tie myself to. But you know, uh, Hanukkah's <laughs> around the corner. And maybe I'll ask for it from my my family <laughs> again. Do. Please stay away from Andy. Just I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to keep your reputation clean in Oklahoma. <laughs> just don't let him come visit. You know, hey, I brought my own pole, buddy. <laughs> oh my god, this guy's we a can freak. set it up in your living room, and I start pole dancing. <laughs> what? Look at this. <laughs> Getting ready for the twister. <laughs> Twista, Twista, Twista. <laughs> Break out the high heels, you guys. Yeah, are here we go again. Andy actually puts the board game out, Twister, and invites a few people over to play with you. Look at this. Oh, we're playing Twister. Andy, get out. Get out. Uh, oh, my God. By the way, I, I would prefer, and I would take a tornado over an earthquake any freaking day of the week, dude. I feel the same way. You get you can see the tornado coming. Yeah. You have warning. You have no warning with an earthquake, and the only place to escape an earthquake is to fly. So unless you got wings, there's nothing you can do. I, I've heard catfish can predict earthquakes about two to three minutes. And why do you think that is? Because they feel the vibrations with their in tusks. those tentacles. Oh. Tentacles, yeah. So if you have catfish in L.A., watch them. Yep. If they start to freak out, you know you got about thirty seconds before the big one hits. It's true. I usually just eat them. What? Yeah. Catfish. <laughs> you go to your tank and see if an earthquake's coming. Oh, I ate all my catfish. <laughs> Honey. How am I going to escape this earthquake? Did you eat the last catfish? <laughs> now we're never going to know when the next earthquake's coming. <laughs> That's so stupid. So, so stupid. stupid. Oh, Horrible. Man. Aren't you happy you joined us? <laughs> oh, right. Look at you know, it's, sitting it's there really like entertaining. I, I do research. I listen to episodes. <laughs> I, I, you know what? You did research Sometimes for this? I'm oh, like, God, man, I'm so I wish sorry. I had brothers like that. That's... You know, if you need a fourth, let me know. Let Dude. Nikki Lawrence is a huge name change, you know. Buddy, if you want to come over, let Nikki Lawrence just come over. <laughs> that would be that would be a mouthful, right? Jonathan Lip Nikki Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually kind of amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, anytime it. you want to come over and hang with us, bud, you can. We'll throw you right in the fire. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you ever come back out this way? I, I've been back a few times, um, but it's, you know, now that my family left, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. why, yeah, I get it. You know, like, that's I, not how the parole and it feels, works. I never, I, I was <laughs> always such a fierce LA defender, know you know, I would always defend LA. And then now I'm like, eh. being, being from there. I love, I love it. I love the Valley. I was a big, I lived in Toluca yeah. Lake for oh, 10 yeah, years. Buddy. How the that's hell that. did we never I hang out? So crazy. Like, yeah, and then I was in Sherman Oaks. I was a Valley guy. Me, you know, I love the Valley. My whole life. Me too, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, I think the last time we hung out is, is it still, it's not the Daily Grill. No, anymore. I wish it was Daily Grill. I know. It was the Daily Grill last That's time right. I think we hung out, yeah. right? Yeah. I miss the Daily Grill. I love the Daily I Grill. Know. Oh, they had great pot pies there. They did. I think yeah. we had Kale Caesar at the Daily Grill. Kale you know? Caesar. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Mm, nothing's more Wonderful Caesar stuff. more than kale. <laughs> you know, they changed their Caesar to a kale Caesar, and it's it wasn't as good. It's supposed to be romaine. Good. Yeah, I, I don't like kale, kale in my Caesar. Kale literally destroys my stomach, dude. Yeah. It's tough on your stomach. I think I'm chewing real, it up, but it chews tough. me up for the next 12 hours. Yeah. I don't like kale. You like kale, Libnicky? <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I'm a broccoli and Brussels sprouts Ooh, person, okay. and then I, you know, maybe some romaine if I'm going to do a salad, but I there you go. Romaine. Now, I, I just, I can't get behind the kale, man. I know. Unless, either, man. I do like kale chips, though. Yes. Yeah. That I can get behind. Kale yeah. chips are actually pretty darn good. I had. Yeah. Um, I was at a uh, a uh, a. Uh, okay, Matt. That's a good. Story. Mr. Chow. <laughs> now we're. Remember that oh. restaurant, Mr. Chow? Oh, you and Mr. Chow. And they have this like Little crunchy, Chow's. um, like it's almost like looks Matt, like shredded. It's, it's not kale, Matt. It's no, seaweed. I, no, no, no. They call it their their the crunchy seaweed, but it's actually kale. Is the point? I actually are you asked. Sure? Yes, I asked. I was like, this is so good. And he was like, well, it's just kale that we. Like uh, do that oven, uh, the dry, the air dryer to it. Right. Put all their soy and yeah, everything exactly. in it. It's good stuff. Yeah. So that's good. good. Stuff. I agree with you. When it's dry. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I can roll with that. But generally, yeah. no. no. You know, I agree with you. And I love fan. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. I love them. I love Brussels sprouts. They're good. Mm. Yummy. Yummy. <laughs> no, I do. I, I love them. Yeah, uh, 
What what's what's your favorite? How's the how's the meat in Oklahoma? It's good, right? Amazing. Beef? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It just like uh, generally just go to any grocery store. It's just it's just better. Uh, and I'm a huge uh, I, I'm a ribeye guy. Cool. Very right. much. You know, you said yeah. meat, right? I oh, yeah. You said oh, meat, yes. Right? Meat. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What, what it comes back to us and we're like, I'm a, we're I'm a, I'm a huge <laughs> ribeye fan. Um, and that was like the one thing I paid attention to. I was on the worst cooks in America celebrity edition on on the Food Network. Wait and a minute. One- you did that, too? Yeah. So did I, buddy. Yeah. The one thing I paid attention to was the, the steak episode. Oh, the steak episode. Yes. I was like, I paid attention to that because I love steak. And I was like, I want yeah. to be good at this. Yep. Very cool. You know, it, was that Ann Burrell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, on her. Uh, yeah, I was on her team. Yeah. You're on her team? I was on yeah. this Jeff Marone. He was the chef that I was on his team. He was mm-hmm. like, the, he was the newcomer that year, though. So How far did you get? Uh, you know, I got to like. I think it was like the last four or five, somewhere around there. Okay, yeah, same here. I, I got yeah. I got very lucky. I shouldn't have made it. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have. Dude, I, things, I was terrible. Things happened that, like, th- things happened that made me go that far. Like, uh, you know, right. we had one contestant leave, and <laughs> and I, like, won, I won in the elimination round, and I got sent to the elimination round, like, every single time. Yeah. But I somehow survived that. So and it was, it was huh? not supposed to go that way, but like, I, I, dude, the one I, thing, like I should have been gone first. I, I, like, I was thinking that the other contestants kept getting injured. No, what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. The one thing that We're really sick. The one thing, thing that really got me is how they amped up the stress. Like, I didn't know that. Like going into, it, I was thinking, oh great, I'm gonna have time. I'm gonna learn from these chefs. Oh, it's stressful. They, oh my god, they literally, you know, they they say you have a week to learn and cook. Yeah, they give you one hour in reality. Say, an hour. They say it on Matt. Yes, I think you, they, you're you're contractually obligated for at least another six months to not say any of this. Oh well, oh they God. they say on air they're like, okay, so you're gonna have a week to prepare this when you come because it's an episode, right? Yeah. I'm not kidding. You go in there and you get one hour. Wow, one hour to learn it, and then you just have to. Was that your experience too? Yeah. So they took a. <laughs> <laughs> so my handwriting is terrible. Oh, you have to write that book, dude. I mean, it's a little book, right? Oh my like, gosh. Doing the writing, Awful. I believe they zoomed in on my writing because it's so bad. <laughs> My writing is so bad, I got extra time on the SAT. I guess I'm dysgraphic. <laughs> Dysgraphia is, I think, a thing. I nice. guess it, there's a name for it. But my wow. writing is so bad that they were just giving me so much crap on that show about my writing. I also cut my hand open uh, one episode. You did? What were <laughs> and you, then they what were you threw doing? some stuff on it. They're like, go back out there. You yep. Know? <laughs> yep. It's like a pit crew. It literally is. Yeah. Ah, I'm bleeding out. Get out there, them Nikki, your rib eyes burning. Keep, keep yeah. writing. Uh, in your yeah. hand. The, there's the just timer blood. too, right? The timer oh. got to me where I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, I think that's part of the show. They they do set these like ridiculous limits and time so that they do stress you the heck out to make you have be good television. I think that's the point. I that's had the, the best time, but boy, was I exhausted. Oh, dude. So I was, was I. exhausted. Did you go to Brooklyn? Stay in Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We had the same experience. (laughs) Great experience. I loved it. I had such a good time. I made some great friends. I was so tired. I was tired for like a week after. I know, dude. I know. Got got any ribeye tips? Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, softening it with with olive oil, definitely beforehand, it was a big one where I never did that. I just kind of, you know, put whatever garlic salt on it and throw it um, uh, on there. But I, I think that... I, I really um, also learned like because I would never you know put it in the oven. I would just try to do it all in a pan. Right. But actually being able to sear it or do a re- reverse sear uh, was something it. that was not in my vocabulary. Interesting. Also using a thermometer to, if you really yep. want to get like let's say oh. you get a really nice piece of meat, you don't want a chance messing it up. Yep. The, there were just these things that I never did because I was just always you know I moved out at eighteen and I just kind of you know figured some things out. I was I knew a few things. I wasn't totally um inept but you, there's just some stuff that you just if you aren't focused on cooking you don't know and oh, yeah. that was the one episode i was like i am going to pay attention to this because i know i'm going to use this at least once a week yep that is so cool dude that's so you know it's fun you just brought that back up i haven't thought about it since i was on that show but you're right i was totally blown away by the fact that you would cook something, whether any kind of meat or whatever, in a pan, make sure the pan was completely metal because a lot of them have those, those rubber handles and you clearly can't use those. Right. Make sure it's a totally metal pan because most most chefs, they'll get that that browning in the pan and then it goes in the oven to get that perfect- Wait, really? Yes. And then it goes in the oven to get that perfect- Shut. Cook. 
I didn't know that. Hold the phone. I didn't know that, dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know, and it's so funny because I don't want to, I never wanted to, well, you know, we're admitting it now, but I never want to admit it and be like, you know. So true, dude. Did Ann say, because she had something where she's like, brown food, good, I think is what she would say, right? Good brown food. (laughs) Yeah, good, yeah, yeah. So funny, dude. Yeah, good brown food. Because the the, the 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 crust that you get when you burn it I a little that. bit, that browning part. crust when it comes to meats, breads. Anne Burrell's a chef, and she says anything that has that little brownie is like. Mm. So you say you burn it, but you get that you get the basically you the crust. sear it, you sear, and, and then, then you, you put cook it in the it. oven, and then you, you put cook it in the it. oven, and that's how you get when you cut something open. And you're like, that? oh my god, how amazing is that? By the way, that goes for chicken. Fish, yeah, of course, red meat, well, vegetable, so anything you could think of. I really, was, like I was doing it the opposite way. I would cook it, and oh, then no, I would no, try no. to get that brown, and no, I would always no, no. mess it up because it would be either too done or. And what, don't like but, I would no. always be open the open the oven to check it, and they both would scream at me. They were like, "Do you realize it's like a rice cooker? Every time you open that oven door, that oven temperature goes down twenty degrees or thirty degrees, and then you gotta cl- and every time you close it, it's gotta restart the process. So don't oh, like." Have your timer and have your thermometer. Those are the those are the most important things. You know your time and you know your temperature. You don't have to keep opening and closing. Your own temperature. Or yes, is the exactly. Temperature oh my god, right. I got a fever. Oh. I gotta lay down. Well, Joe, watch, watch my oven. steak. You're watch st- my steak, Joe. You've been standing in front of the oven for twenty minutes. I'm sure you're hot. <laughs> Look at me. It's 110. Oh my gosh. Wait. Did you guys? Sorry to get this is really random, but you guys to segue here. But did you guys? You did. You said you did a movie during COVID, right? Yeah. Did you remember the COVID? I did too. Do you remember the, the COVID protocols where you get to set and then have to take your temperature? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, we yes. were, this was November or December and it was freezing and I had the heat cranked. I got there, my temperature was 104 degrees because I was sitting in the heated room. Oh. Car. And I was like, oh no, I got COVID, I'm dying. And he was like, no, you're not. Just stand outside your car for about, about a minute and I'll retake your temperature. And sure enough, it was because I was in the heated yeah. car. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Random, random shit. But that's how you learn to stay home. You yes. just heat yourself up. Just like Ferris Bueller, yeah. remember? Oh, you yeah. Lick, you lick your palm. It works. <laughs> no, it works. If you if you go into a heated yeah, room, yeah, yeah, your yeah. temperature will, yeah. will be really high. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. crazy. Yep. Anyway. Awesome. Well, what's what's uh what's uh next next for you, man? What's the uh plan other than destroying everyone that uh, crosses you with your jujitsu abilities? <laughs> oh <laughs> man, doing? oh man, I'm 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 a kind individual. I don't want to destroy anyone unless they deserve it. Uh that right. is the but- mind. <laughs> That but, is uh, mine. That's, that's, that's jujitsu right I there. have a TV show I'm on coming out um, next year on TBS called The Joe Schmo Show. It's an improv based show. Love it. Um, Get out of it's here. It's a great idea. Yeah. Joe Schmo. So uh, I it's use basically, my name, uh, it's from same, some of the same people who did like Nathan for you. If you saw Ooh, that. Amazing, cool. dude. Amazing. Cool, dude. Yeah. And so uh, cool. that, that I have, I, I just did a small part in a movie opposite Ron Perlman, a Western out here. Cool. Nice. Uh, part in that. Little part in another movie, and then with the movies, it's like people always like, "When do they come out?" I'm like, I have no clue. You never know. Yeah. Us too. And Us too. Who knows yeah. when? And then yeah. I have a movie. Is it coming out in February? Like a horror movie. Cool. Um, which was, uh, which was, of course, really fun to film. So just staying active, and then busy, um, enjoying life, really. Good, dude. It's so awesome good to hear, man, and so good to see you, bro. I mean, and just to see the the place that you're in. Man, it makes me so happy. I know. I love it, dude. I know. When you come oh, out I love. LA, I love seeing you guys. It's so, you know what? I love this connection because we get so many, and those stories need to be told, of course. We get so many negative stories of what yeah. happens when things go wrong. But what happens when people chase what they love and they continue to do it through thick and thin, but they go. had a good experience overall doing it? Amen. There you go, dude. I, I want to see more to of those stories. Amen Me too, to man. I do too. Well do. said. I, very, I, very well yes, said. Yes. And I hope you do come out to L.A., so we would love to get together with you. Yeah, yeah. man. See you, man. Well, and dude, we're gonna talk. We're keep, gonna we and keep us discuss. in mind. Keep us in mind because I know from our end, if we have anything, we would love to work with you, dude. Yeah, and we'd dude. Love to have you of a part of anything we do. So yeah, it'd be really fun to do that. Yeah, so we'll have Oh yeah, absolutely. I would. I love to work with you guys. This this you chemistry know. is amazing right here. You guys it's are happening. hilarious together. And we'll uh, it, I'm honored you had me on this. I'd been seeing you know the clips and 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 I was like, that's really great. They're doing that. What a what a smart idea. And a way to keep you, you, you have such a dedicated fan base. I looked at even the reviews, like you have such great dedicated fan base and to keep them engaged. And and people are always wondering one of those most popular things, where are they now? What are they doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because they, they only see you when you pop up in things or, you know, uh, and now they get to, they get to really check up with you on a regular basis. And I think it's everything that everybody would want to know that you guys were like, (laughs) you know, I appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's reciprocated. It is, 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 man. It is, is, it is, you know, we were, we were both lucky to be at the tail end of that generation where, where, where it was meaningful 
to the people that really liked what we did, right? Yeah. It really meant yeah. something to yeah. them in the in in this in this era now with well, such snippets a fast, and sound bites. It's, it's such snippets a fast, and sound bites, right? You know, Everything yeah. lives in thirty seconds or less. I feel like one of the things that we're gonna miss from this crop of people that are well known for a minute or not well known for a minute is that it, we'll, we'll see how fleeting that is because because staying around, sticking around is gonna be tough to do because they hop from what they don't even listen to full songs anymore. You get ten yeah. seconds into a song and. Go to the next song. I'm bo- I'm done with this song. I'm like done. You didn't even hear the the bridge, the best part of the song. Yeah. You know, it's like so. I feel like we were able to benefit from that last generation where it really meant something to people to follow somebody they liked for their whole careers. You know, yeah. and I absolutely. Feel like you, and and, you and I'm grateful that for that. That you know, movies. There wasn't the social media advent yet. Yeah. You know, and uh, yep. and I think it can be great for a lot of things to get your content out, things like that. But at the end it of the day, absolutely. it's like when you it love. Great making movies, the thing that does give me a lot of hope, because I have worried about that, is seeing something like Oppenheimer doing, you know, really yes. well and it being a very long movie, Killers of yes. the Flower Moon being a very long movie. Yep. So I think yes. the the appetite is still there. It's definitely and there. That truly we can be, of course, grateful for what those times meant for us, but ultimately the best is yet to come for all of the all of us. But yep. the best is okay, yet man. to come for, I believe, film. I think we just things go in seasons and things go in cycles, but Amen, dude. If the world ends tomorrow, I'd rather be optimistic that it's getting better, you know? Oh, no, dude, dude no. I just I just yeah. realized that with you every really valley, do. No, you've you gotta, climb again. But you, know, I, you go down and you go up. That's just, yeah. that's just what happens in life. So I feel like with COVID and what we went through as a society and a world, I feel like we had a we had a nice big low. And that's this that's what life's all about. It's the ups and downs, it's the bumps, right? So just that's where we are now. We are on an upward tra- tra- trajectory because that's that's where we go as 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 a species. We go down and then just instinctually we just climb again. Well, and you I know think what, that's where we're going. You know what? There's that there's a there's a saying, you know, it's uh, good times make weak people. Weak people make bad times. Bad times make strong people. Yes, you're <laughs> it's exactly just, right. It's just a cyclical ride Amen. that we all go it, on. It as is. A, as I think. A I think it's going to be. There's going to be some great art. I'm hopefully. You know, if there, anything comes out of this strike, and anything comes out of all the the adversity that art has faced in general, I hope that people enjoy going to the movies again. Heck yes. yeah, man. because I think it is a beautiful thing. We have the opportunity here as as artists, as as actors to build bridges and not divides. And I think Heck our yeah. world yes. can really stand to, to have yeah. some bridges instead of divides. And, you know, we have a lot more in common with the people that we argue with and we, you Heck know, yeah. would admit. And I and think that yeah. art yes. is a great way to build those bridges. One, yeah, man. One well said. Well said. Going back to our Tom Cruise thing, seeing something like Top Gun Maverick just proves yes, that, of that if you make something for everybody, everybody can go enjoy it, no matter yep. where you sit on political spectrums or wherever you go ideologically, all that stuff. If you make something Films for everybody, bridges. everybody, like you said, there is a bridge there that brings people together, and that's why that movie made over a billion dollars, and I was so happy it, to see it. Absolutely. It was, yep. it was It was. It was. the first time I'd been to a movie, and I, I can't even remember how long where people clapped at the end. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. so true. Yeah. We thought the same thing sitting in the theater. I was like, amen, thank you, Tom Cruise. God bless you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and we dude, can do that. Right. I mean, it's your podcast is doing that. You know, it brings it brings people together. It, it's family. It, there's so many ways, small and, and large, that we can in this industry. I really feel, you know, drop a lot of what has divided us and really gain what could, could you know, bring us together. And that's what I yeah. feel it used to do. And I feel like maybe this season, if it's taught us anything, is to go back to that. Amen, dude. Yes. Heck yeah, I love yes. that. I love well that. said. I love, I, I love your outlook on the yes. business, on life. Yep. I, I really do. Dude. You I, are officially... I'm- a fourth Lawrence Heck brother, yeah, man. Thank All you, right? thank you. Officially. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting with Mickey for the Lawrence t-shirt, in the house, hopefully. everybody. Yes. Yes. With Mickey Lawrence in the house, Love everybody. Yeah. John, listen. When 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 you are in town, please, yeah, dude, please I mean, reach no out. Bullshit. Yeah, let us know, Andy. We'll all go out and we'll and we'll get a bite to eat. I'd love to sit across the table from you. All Heck right, yeah, man. Likewise, likewise. All right, brother. All right, bro. Be well, Let's thank you for being a part of the show. Yeah, dude. We'll thank see you. everybody soon. God bless everybody. Thank Have a great you. rest of your weekend. We'll see you next Friday on the Brotherly Love Pod, the Pod, the Pod, everybody. Thanks, Jonathan Lindnick. Yeah, buddy. Brother. What a Bye pleasure. Everybody. Thanks. Hey guys, the Lawrence Brothers here. We just want to thank you for watching this week's episode of the Brotherly Love Pod. Go to our link tree and subscribe on all platforms. And make sure you join us next, next week. week.